How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Thursday on this program, and you know what that means? Last night, AW Dynamite, the go-home Dynamite for the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. And we have got a Rampage show coming up on Friday. Uh, but I believe that all of the matches for Forbidden Door are known as of today. So that's pretty much the main thing to talk about here today, Dynamite and Forbidden Door, so we'll do that. What do you think of the show? You're welcome to contact us, 425-780-7566. They added four matches to the show last night. And so uh, at this point, we've got uh, quite a few matches on this pay-per-view. I guess the two big stories were Brian Danielson announcing that he is not on the show, nor is he on the Blood and Guts show. And in fact, Will Ospreay, I'm sorry, well, Will Ospreay's on the show as well. But uh, Kazuchika Okada showed up, and it will be a four-way for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Jay White, Hangman Page, Adam Cole, and Okada for the title. Those are the two biggest stories, I would say, coming out of the show last night. So we can talk about that, as well as notes on the NXT 2.0 ratings, which were huge. It's interesting because uh, Dynamite last week didn't do well, and uh, Rampage did horribly. But uh, SmackDown, Raw, and NXT, all huge numbers. And uh, we could talk about that here today. Plus an update on Rhea Ripley, who has uh, gone public with the issues that are keeping her out of the pay-per-view. We can tell you about that. Uh, and also on the subject of uh, AEW injuries, you can add Sky Blue to the list. Uh, she is injured. Kyle O'Reilly is injured. Red Velvet is injured. There have never been this many injuries at one time at AEW. Back in a moment to talk about all of it. Observer Live. Hey, the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. If you're watching the uh, Twitch video right now, you just saw Denise. I will be on Denise's show, 110 Pacific, 410 Eastern today. We'll be doing a preview of the Forbidden Door pay-per-view and uh, talk some other stuff as well. So that's coming up today after this show, so you can look forward to that. And... Uh, we got a lot to talk about from that Dynamite show last night. The show opened with Brian Danielson coming out. And you know what happened when that guy came out? Mike's already backing away from the mic. You know what happened when that guy came out? He said, I will not be at Forbidden Door, nor will I be at Blood and Guts. Hmm. How about that? DJ, did I uh, get my apology from uh, the peanut gallery yesterday and all of the uh, uh, places that were very mad at me for uh, having the temerity to report what ended up being exactly 100% accurate? Did I get my apology? Oh, he's laughing uproariously. Sounds like, no, I didn't get my apology. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't care. I'm not here for praise. Oh, I'm not yeah? here to get apologies. Oh, yeah? I don't, I don't care one way or the other. Did you apologize to everybody yet? For what? Because there are people out there that said that you and your partner on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer, led them to believe Kazuchika Okada or Kazuchika Okada, depending on how everybody wants to fight over translations now, Kazuchika Okada would not be there. His wife was pregnant. She's having a birthday. He's not coming over here. But there he is. You led yeah, there he was. Astray, Brian I never Alvarez. said he wasn't going to be there. I said I expected it to be a three-way. I didn't know what the match was going to be. I mean, you know, Okada Okada had done an interview where he talked about this. there shouldn't even be a show without him. And then, uh, you know, there was word that he wasn't going to be there. And, uh, you know, they even had someone on the show say he wasn't going to be there for crying out loud. You got work, loud. bro. You got I got work. work. Who cares? I got work by Juice Robinson, too. Well, now you I didn't admit. think it was... I did think it was funny that uh, actually, you know, the, the thing about Juice Robinson is kind of funny because I was sort of worked, but at the same time, he actually was telling the truth. His New Japan yeah. contract had expired at the time. That was all true. Now, the part where he said, you know, I don't know if I want to do this anymore and everything like that. I mean, uh, I guess I presume that he was be he was working, but, you know, maybe he was just depressed. I don't know. But one way or the other, 
Uh, one way or the other. One way or the other, New Japan and Okada AEW is in. Put on a, a show and Brian that people Danielson need is to out. complain about. People yeah. need to complain about it, whether they love New Japan or love AEW or maybe even worse, hate both of them and love WWE. You know, it's going to be a good show when it's all said and done. We can pick nits over lots of different things. People can cry and say that politics don't matter when they absolutely do, unfortunately, in the scope of this thing. I just, for anything I want to say, I just feel as though there's going to be one side that just gets all in a tizzy. And I'm sure we'll get into some of this stuff today, but it's just... People, Naito's not there. This should happen. This should be a singles match. This should be this. Why is this this? Man. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Let me tell y'all something, something else. okay? Let me tell y'all something, all right? I don't know about Andrade, okay? Andrade seems to think that he was, and I guess he said this, that he was booked for the show, and then he was going to wrestle Osprey, and then uh, and then they put the, the kibosh, the Ixne on it, okay? But, I mean, a lot of this, you know, it was not like there was ever a card that had the Lucha Brothers on it, okay? I talked about this. It's been known forever that the Lucha Brothers were not going to be able to work this show. Most of the issues with this show have nothing to do with politics, okay? There are a few wrestlers that can't work the show as a result of politics. But I guess maybe with the exception of Andrade, all of that was known going in. The issues with the booking of this show are almost 100% due to all of the injuries that have taken place that have changed a lot of the major matches. Uh, they they announced last night a, uh, I can get the card here later, but like a totally random match involving Sting and Darby and the Young Bucks and Hikaleo is in there and Shingo is in there. Listen, I don't Hiromu? I have absolutely I have absolutely no idea what the New Japan or what the uh the Young Bucks match was originally going to be, okay? But they're the AEW World Tag Team Champions. And they're in a match where Hikaleo and Shingo were thrown in at the last minute. There is no way that was the originally scheduled Young Bucks match. I don't know what it was. I don't know who was originally going to be in it. They announced last night that Kyle O'Reilly uh, is injured. He's he's on the shelf. So I don't know if originally the Young Bucks and Red Dragon or... I don't know what the match was going to be. But that was another match that was changed due to injury. The uh, Hangman Page, uh, the IWGP Championship match, that was changed during due to injury. The uh, uh, CM Punk uh, Tanahashi match changed due to injury. Whatever Moxley was going to do changed due to injury. I mean, you can go down the card. If you want me to go down the card, I mean, there were, I'm sure, tons of matches that have now been made that were never originally going to be made. And, uh, and other matches. Okay, here, here we go. John Moxie and Hiroshi Tanashi changed due to injury. Jay White, uh, Okada, Hangman, and Cole changed due to injury. Uh, Malachi Black, Pac, Miro, Nishi, I presume that was uh, that was the original match. Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, I presume there were no changes there. Uh, United Empire, FTR, Rapongi Vice, I presume that was the original match. But Will Ospreay, Orange Cassidy changed due to injury. Uh, Jericho, Minoru Suzuki, Sammy Guevara, Eddie Kingston, Wheeler, Yudin, Shota, uh, Umino, I presume that was originally uh, scheduled. Zack Sabre, uh, to be determined, changed due to injury. And then uh, Bullet Club versus Sting, Darby, Shingo, and Hiromu. Young Bucks, Fantasma, and Hikaloyo are uh, Bullet Club. Changed due to injury. So how many matches did I just rattle off that were changed due to injury? Everyone's complaining about politics and everything, but what really screwed up this show was injuries. I don't know what's what you can do about up, it. What's been brought up about, you know, politics has been written about, injuries have been written about, and, you know, this is just step one. And I know like, if we look back... 10 years from now and this is the only thing that new japan and AEW collaborate on yeah i'll probably look back and go man i wish there was a whole lot in hindsight that would have been changed but this is going to be hopefully step one and 
we've seen shows like this a zillion times where groups work together, especially if you're a Japanese fan. Now, maybe if you're not as much, when you see super shows like these and, and groups working together, you get a lot of multiple person matches. You get a lot of tag team matches. And that's what we have here. So, no, is Orange Cassidy the person I would have picked to come off the bench to replace Andrade against Will Ospreay? No. But we also don't know what else went behind this as well, too. And you do have two separate companies that are trying to actually do a bunch of things and protect people and do what they need to do for storylines that have nothing to do with this one night and that are going to continue on and may have an effect for later on in the next upcoming months. So... It's just the amount of reaction, pro and con, push and pull, and, and everybody going after each other last night after that show was, it was something else. All right, we're going to do a break here in a while, but uh, I want to throw out the phone numbers and et cetera here. If you'd like to text us, 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And yes, if you'd like a cameo from the shores of the Pacific Ocean, home of the All-Atlantic title, I will be doing those from the beach, F4W Online on Cameo, so make sure you check that out. And uh, also, we're live, pal! I was a special guest this week. Check that one out on YouTube later. And uh, I'll be on Denise's show immediately after this show as well. So, man, so much stuff, brother. And we got more after the break. Observer Live! Mike Sempervivi here, Wrestling Observer Live. Brian Alvarez also here. I'm not sure since I don't have... Uh, the Twitch or YouTube chats up if you can see this man's torso right now in your camera lens. That's right. Now apparently the picture is frozen. No, there he is. He's very vascular. You see his forearm. He probably gets a lot of work on that forearm now that he has two kids and his wife doesn't want anything to do with him. Yep, Brian Alvarez in that baby blue shirt. I have no idea what he's doing. He just got up moments ago and started fiddling around with stuff. I know this doesn't make for very good radio, everybody, but there's an adventure going on in the home of Brian Alvarez right now. Now he's looking angrily at his computer. I have no idea what's going on here. He's got no audio, apparently, whatsoever. I have no idea if I'm even on right now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> So we'll get back to Brian here in a moment once Brian figures out exactly what is going on over there and we can get his uh, world famous and critically acclaimed dynamite review from from last night. Ric Flair is having a press conference right now because his last match is coming up. They moved it out of the fairgrounds to Nashville Municipal Auditorium. They are hyping that up as we speak. Ric Flair's last match coming up part of Money in the Bank weekend taking place in Nashville. So there is that Brian's forearm and and right bicep and now belt buckle still in the shot. <laughs> oh man, we shall take it to the front page of the Wrestling Observer newsletter right now, where men like Ian Carey are putting in work. In fact, Ian just posted up a story not all that long ago about Rhea Ripley being back uh, fairly soon following a possible concussion and having her te teeth knocked loose. It was announced on Raw that she would be unable to perform at Money in the Bank due to her injuries. Ripley uh, revealed in an Instagram comment yesterday that she is dealing with brain and teeth issues. Can't see a, bra can't see a brain injury. Stop being competent at reaching at nothing for those people that said that Ripley was not injured. She responded back to them. So Dave and Brian talked about it on this morning's Wrestling Observer Radio. Her teeth were knocked loose in a match and had braces put in and uh, unfortunately, we're not sure about the other thing when it comes to her brain. Odds are it's a concussion. Hopefully it is a light one and she can return soon, as Brian Alvarez is doing to the show right now. Yes. Yes, I am back. Hello, everybody. What happened? My internet just died. It was weird. It was bizarre. Your Man's internet died? So, everyone, so Wait, uh... what a second, though. If your internet died, what exactly is the video wired into? No, the internet on the uh, the thing that connects. The, oh, the tie line oh. just dropped the internet, and I couldn't get it fixed again. <laughs> so I rebooted everything. But yes, Rhea Ripley is injured, and uh, I, I don't know. Bro, what else could a brain injury be? <laughs> like She had to watch it removed and put back in, <laughs> like Shibata. I think it's, uh, it's one of those oh, things my. that's like so weird. It's like, 
you're allowed to like tell the world that you have a brain injury, but don't don't ever use the word concussion. And uh, again, we don't know for sure that Brian Danielson is out with a concussion, but I mean, we initially heard one to two weeks. Now it's been longer. And then the first thing he said about people worried about his uh, his health is that he could read 200 words a minute and a bunch of other stuff that I can run two miles. <laughs> your brain. So I, I presume that uh, he and Rhea are both out with concussions, but no one's allowed to say the word concussion. So at the end of the day, what matters is they're both out. And uh, Rhea says she'll be back soon. But I mean, uh, and I hope she is. But Brian Danielson also was supposed to be back soon, and uh, he's not back yet. And he it would not be the first person who uh, they figured would be back soon. And uh, and That's wasn't. worrisome. It is. It is as a fan of Brian Danielson. And I'm one of those people that said, if he was done, great. You owe me nothing. I've seen it all. I know you want to do more. But you know what? If you stop today, you are in that top percentile. You won. You're one of those people I can say outright won the professional wrestling business. Um, but he's had a lot of these things. We've talked about it at length over a lot of time. Everybody knows the time he had to sit on the shelf in WWE before eventually he was cleared and then eventually he made his way to AEW. But it's just a scary thought. And, uh, you know, hopefully he's, you heard him talking about what he, you know, this is the, these are the things I can do no matter what my condition, my brain may happen to be in, but you're taking a lot of beatings here and how, how much longer we'll see. So apparently Brian's internet is out again. too. <laughs> he just gave me the, uh, the throat slash. So that's not good. <laughs> I'm going to delay on doing anything when it comes to the dynamite review until we might be able to get him back on here. So yeah. And Rod A.L. Idolo and Ray Phoenix is set for, for Rampage on Friday. No spoilers, of course. We'll let Font Fauntleroy do that one and read down the card, possibly maybe a little bit later on. But Andrade and Ray Phoenix, uh, plus three additional bouts, have been planned for Friday's AEW Rampage. They taped the whole thing after uh, Dynamite last night. And this is, uh, apparently, this is Andrade's first singles bout on TV since losing a coffin match to Darby Allen in April. He did appear at the uh, Casino Battle Royal on the June 8th Dynamite and then defeated Frankie Kazarian on Dark Elevation in a match that actually had aired this week. So, again, no spoilers, but all of the word is you got to watch Andrade and Phoenix. Uh, no surprise, Dave and Brian talked about it this morning. Dave had heard that it was great. There were a couple other people online who have already seen it and said, yeah, you know, that's one you got to watch. They're having their pay-per-view match that a lot of people thought Andrade should be having here against Will Ospreay. They had it against each other, and apparently it kicked ass. Jeff Cobb faces Cash Wheeler, and it's going to be nice to actually see Cash in the ring in a singles match. Uh, he's becoming like the Marty to, to Dax's Sean uh, in some way when it comes to the praise that Dax gets for his uh, singles matches. But you face off against Jeff Cobb. How is it not going to be awesome? So Cash Wheeler and Jeff Cobb will be facing off against each other. Hook will be facing the DKC from the uh, LA Dojo, plus Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez tagging up together as it looks like they are going to be paired off against each other uh, for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship that's going to be taking place. Now, there's one criticism about AEW that's probably true. There are too many belts. And as much as I like seeing Jay Lethal and Samoa Joe involved in something, ROH having a television champion right now is kind of wacky. I mean, it is, right? <laughs> it's They have no TV. They may never get TV again. They may end up on a streaming service somewhere. Why they still have that TV title, I don't know. What they can do, I don't know. But uh. speculation station, it's hard to believe that after what Brian Danielson said last night, it's hard to believe that it's not going to be the former Antonio Cesaro, Claudio Castagnoli. It could be somebody else, but it's really hard to believe that Brian Danielson was not talking about uh, Cesaro last night and the possibility of him coming in and replacing him, not only at Forbidden Door against Zack Sabre Jr., but also in the Blood and Guts match. And, I'll say this, if it's Cesaro, because he's got a history with Eddie Kingston, you know, you could 
maybe add some intrigue uh, to the to the match. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to see a situation like Kurt Henning and the Horsemen and the NWO back in the day where he gets in there and he's going to help defend the honor. And then he ends up turning immediately and, and beating down Flair and all that sort of stuff, slamming the cage door on the head, doing that routine. I wouldn't be looking forward to something like that, but it would add a little bit of mysterious intrigue in i guess for for some people if you wanted to go in that direction uh if, if it's him who shows up to face off against zach saber jr if it's not him i don't know who else it could be because you have jonathan gresham on the roster and he's fabulous and he is your roh heavyweight champion and he is the type of person that brian danielson was talking about but i have a feeling that if it was going to be a jonathan gresham you would have announced that last night and you could have had some sort of face off against zach saber jr it's just not a big enough name it's not enough of an impactful name for you to pull that out as a surprise the only other person that i could randomly think of maybe i don't know his contract status I don't know his concussion status, but we've seen a lot of guys come back from head and neck injuries that a lot of people thought they'd never come back from. And that's Nigel McGinnis. And like I said, it, it, it's such it's a it's a slight outside shot. I am ninety nine point nine. Isn't he still working sure. for NXT UK? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. But I don't know. I don't watch NXT UK. I have no idea if he does announcing. I have no idea about any of that stuff or his or his status. So I, again, if it's not Gresham, if it's not Zack Saber Jr., you start trying to pull up names from the past and pull up names that you think would be relevant, who he could actually be, you know, talking about. And there's just there's just not enough of them, you know. Other yeah, than he's, Gresham, he signed he well, signed a WWE. He's a commentator for NXT, so, so they, he's gonna be so, nice. Yeah. Well, forget about him. Take him out of the mix. Well, you know, I a mean, name someone threw him. in here. Who? Chris Hero. Just as good as Claudio. Because, Just as because good. His here's, partner. Yes. Here's the thing. Perfect. Like, everyone's talking about uh, Gargano. And I would have no problem with Gargano. But 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 the promo last night. <laughs> the promo say. last night. Danielson said, I trust this man to both face Zack Sabre Jr. And also, like, a violent blood and guts match coming up on... on uh, on Wednesday, and I'm not saying that that Gargano couldn't do a wild blood and guts match, but that seems more fitting, like a, a big brutish, you know, a, a, a Claudio, a Chris Hero, and uh, Chris Hero is back taking bookings again. So I don't think yeah. it's uh, I don't think it's Chris Hero, but somebody brought it up in the chat, and uh, you know that's as good a that's as good a name as any. But I do think it's most likely Claudio. You know what I'd like to see? Claudio come back, team with Chris Hero, and they face off against FTR. That's what I'd like to see. Well, brother, what I'd like to see is my internet hold up for this last segment, because that's pretty worrisome. Back in a moment, and I'll do this AEW report, Observer Live. Well, I made it through the commercial, so let's try this. AW Dynamite. Open up with Danielson coming out. Brian Danielson said he will not be at the Forbidden Door pay-per-view or Blood and Guts. That's what he said. I hope he didn't go on social media afterwards to get yelled at. But he said, I have good news. I have the one person I trust to take my place at both Forbidden Door and Blood and Guts. But I'm not going to tell you who it is. And boy, were the fans not happy about that. And uh, it was it was weird because, like... You know, he he mentioned that he came through the bad guy tunnel and he kind of sort of turned heel on the fans and then like he celebrated afterwards and and uh, then he got up on that middle rope and put his arms in the air and he kind of had that look on his face like uh, it didn't work out of the way. But anyway, uh, I thought the promo was actually really really great until it totally fell off a cliff at the end. But whatever, Saber's music played, he came out, he uh, looked at Danielson and uh and that was it. No promo by uh, Zack Sabre Jr. And uh, Dave last night was saying he should have said something or said, you know, when you're back, I'm going to get you. And I, I don't have a problem with him saying anything. But the two things are, bro, they had so much to cram into this show. And also, the fans were already mad that you weren't getting the match. So I'm not sure that if it would have been like better for Zack Sabre Jr. to say, hey, you know, one of these days I'll face you, but I'll see this other bloke on Sunday. And he could actually said bloke. Right? 
Yeah, then yeah. we had uh, Orange Cassidy, Rapongi Vice versus Will Ospreay and Aussie Open. And uh, once again, Will Ospreay's team lost. Uh, but in this case, I wasn't. it didn't bother me because Orange Cassidy got the big win. And uh, they want to give Orange Cassidy credibility because he's facing Will Ospreay in a match that people were not expecting and was not originally going to be on the show. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that uh, whatever you want to say about the actual match, and, you know, I said some stuff. Like, I was not expecting, of all people, Will Ospreay to face Orange Cassidy. But it's going to be, like probably a great match because everything they did in the match looked great you know orange cassidy does his gimmick but he's actually a very good worker and i think that people are going to be uh maybe surprised by that match and then it was a big brawl afterwards jeff cobb great O'Con, united empire ftr came out to a huge pop to even the odds and uh this had some uh this had some great heat we had the christian cage promo do you know that if you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, tonight you will be able to get the Brian and Vinny show where Vinny and I will spend 90 minutes reviewing AEW and NXT. And uh, suffice to say, I'm going to need that time to fully talk about this particular promo right here. But uh, the short story, for those of you listening for free here at Wrestling Observer Live, the short version of the story is, yes, Christian is angry. Because well over a year ago, he was thrown out of the Casino Battle Royal by the Jungle Boy. And he has been plotting this for over a year. And he finally, he finally turned on the Jungle Boy. And by the way, it was, it was actually explained why he never turned on him until after Jungle Boy lost the belts. He didn't cost Jungle Boy the titles because in Christian's mind, bro, what a job I had. I just had to come out here and give this geek a pep talk. I made tons of money to stand around ringside. And what really made him mad was not only that Jungle Boy had thrown him out of the Battle Royal and cost him money there, but when Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus lost those titles, man, now I actually got to work. So anyway, he turned on Jungle Boy he did do the line, you know, you may want me for a father figure, because you need a father figure, because your father's dead. Oh! I was like, I, my God, I don't need to see this on two shows. But I will say, you know, and I'm not defending it, but I just want to point out, bro, those fans got so, so mad at him for that line. I mean, that was heat for that line. And then Luchasaurus runs out. And uh, Jungle Boy says, you know what? You, Luchasaurus, you were like a son to me. And this actually, you know, gives Luchasaurus pause. And so uh, Christian goes to have a talk with Luchasaurus, and he makes sure to wink into the camera so we all know he's a horrible person. And uh, we will see where this goes. But, you know, the line about the dead father aside... I mean, bro, this was a fantastic promo by Christian. Like, this was a fabulous promo. Because at the beginning, you know, he wasn't getting a lot of heat at the beginning, let's be honest. But, man, these people were, like, rabid by the end of this promo. So, anyway, this was quite the performance by Christian. But I got a lot more I can say about it tonight. All dressed for a while as being uh, a Scooby-Doo villain. Didn't he look like one? Well, he always kind of dresses like that. But uh, Young Bucks and Kyle O'Reilly backstage, and uh, this is when Kyle admitted that he is also not medically cleared, and they announced this this baffling match. The Young Bucks. Think about the Young Bucks, dude, on the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. This is what the the Young Bucks... This is what the Young Bucks ended up with. The Young Bucks, El Fantasma, who's awesome, and uh, Hikaleo, who has improved a lot... Against Sting, Darby Allen, and I guess, you know, they just said, like, your buddies. Who end up being uh, Shingo and uh, who's the other one? It's Hiromu! And, uh, Hiromu, that's right. It's Shingo like, and Hiromu. It's crazy. Absolutely and crazy. And literally, literally, if you watch Darby Allen's promo, he did exactly what I did. But he didn't totally forget the name. But if you listen to him rattling off everybody in this match, he was clearly, like, told about this in the afternoon. And he's like, and uh, Hiromu and, uh, and Shingo are going to be with us. <laughs> it's like, okay. 
Wow. Then I mean, the match is probably going to be the match is probably going to be awesome. I mean, it's probably going to be like full out awesome. But boy, what a weird match. When did they get the names Dudes with Attitudes? Because they didn't say that during the show. Today. And all of a sudden afterwards, it's No, they like, said it during the show. Did they? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost. They no, actually, you know, the they show. may not have. It might have just been the, the graphic. <laughs> I just remember that bizarre. shot back in the day. It was the Dynamic Dudes and, yes, the Dynamic Dudes of Johnny Ace and Shane Douglas and the Junkyard Dog and Tommy Rich and Sting. Stay all huddled around yes. Ted Turner after the sale. Yeah. They were the dudes with attitudes, and now Sting. It was Sting is the old man in that exchange. Now it's crazy. It was it was absolutely on the graphic, but I don't think Darby or Sting ever mentioned that these are their dudes with attitudes. Dudes with attitudes. Oh no! I mean, Shingo's definitely a dude Tony with an stop. attitude. Hiromu's a dude with a different kind of attitude. I wish they were dudes with video packages. <laughs> and I know some people are like, I'm, I know it's it's a nitpick. And I know a majority, I would I would venture a majority of the AEW fan base has got a knowledge of New Japan. But Tanahashi, Okada, uh, Hiromu, these guys, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if we've gotten maximum impact out of everybody. I mean, everything seems a little scattershot, no, injuries, haven't. all this other stuff. This, they absolutely... this was clearly, this was <laughs> clearly, I, you know what? I don't know for sure, okay? But how can I say this? I have been given the impression, but I don't know for sure, that uh, when they woke up Wednesday, it was not this match. I think I think that they didn't find out. I think that Kyle was probably supposed to be in. And listen, don't report this because I don't know for sure. I'm fitting pieces together here. I have this impression that Kyle was probably supposed to be in the match, and they found out Wednesday that Kyle wasn't cleared, and then they had to throw together whatever they threw together. Well, that's and why they so, got Bobby no, they, out of there with that with that uh, sting thing. Where the chair, no, no, the no. Thing. That was actually that was actually something different. I don't oh, think they okay. found out about Kyle until yesterday. That's the impression that oh, I was wow. given. So I think that yesterday there was a different match. So for people, like, you're welcome to complain that there were no video packages because it is a valid complaint. But it's not like, uh, I don't think it was uh, because of incompetence they didn't have a video no. package. I think it was because everything changed that day and they just didn't have time to get a video package ready for whatever ended up being announced later on in the evening. I believe, yeah, absolutely. I believe that to be the case too. I just think, you know, overall, they probably haven't done a good job driving it home. I, I don't know. I would assume that there's going to be a hype package, you know, half hour hype show. Yes, yeah, so we'll have something place. on Rampage. And I bet you, and I bet you, whatever they do for that hype show, that might be their best one yet because you're going to get so much footage from New Japan and really driving home from Excalibur and everybody else how good some of these guys are because I know JR is trying to do his best because I know he is legitimately impressed every time he's seen Tanahashi and Okada but I just I don't think it's enough for some people who are like I, there's a zillion people I never get to see because of the size of this roster who are these other guys I'm not that interested in this you're not making me that interested in this all right, we got to get through this. We had Malachi Black and Penta for the All Atlantic Qualifier. Penta not allowed to be on the show, and so Malachi Black won with a kick. And then we had uh, an appearance by everybody in the match except Ishii. No video, no appearance by Ishii. He was nowhere to be seen. Or low video package. He still wants Scorpio Sky, who in fact also injured. We had Hangman Page versus Silas Young. In uh, Silas Young, he's a local guy, and so uh, fans got into him. The more the match went, and the longer it went, and the more he did, the more they got into him. And uh, he did fall down near the end, but uh, he still jumped up on the ropes. He he fought to get that headstand, and he got it. And they popped huge for that, but he uh, ended up uh, missing. And then Page hit a uh, lariat, a buckshot lariat, pinned him. And then that's when they shot the angle afterwards where uh, Okada made his big appearance. And so we have got a four-way for the IWGP title. And man, you know, say what you will about, you know, who we know and who the audience doesn't know. But bro, this audience knew Okada. And he got the biggest pop of anybody on the show. When that coin dropped, holy smokes, they went crazy for Okada. And uh, that's also, like this card, whatever you want to say about the booking, I think it's exactly like I said literally on day one. You ain't going to like all the matches, like the, the, you know, the matches that are put together on paper, but this show's going to be over, and it's going to be an awesome show. Tony Storm, Marina Shafir. Uh, Dave liked this more than I did. I thought it was all right. I think that Tony needed more. 
Uh, she had that that match with Britt that was actually an excellent match, and then this one was just it's kind of there. It's hard to have a good match with Marina. Tony, God damn near killed her with that ass in the corner again, and then uh, ended up rolling her up and pinning her. And then we had a uh, uh, kerfluffle, as I like to call it, and a stare down with uh, Thunder Rosa and uh, and Tony Storm. Rampage Friday. Uh, I don't have Fauntleroy here, so I'll try to say this as generically as possible. Hook versus DKC, Andrade versus Ray Phoenix, Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez and tag action, Jeff Cobb versus Cash Wheeler. Moving on! Main event, John Moxley Tanahashi against Jericho and Lance Archer. It was an excellent main event. A lot of brawling with John Moxley and Jericho. Uh, Tanahashi's in there, and dude, bro, this guy's old. And uh, he's barely vaulting over the top rope. And it's taken a long time to get in position for the high fly flow. But, dude, he's a legend, and he knows what to do. And the people were into him. And he pu- he pulled everything off. He pulled all of it off. And I think him and Mox are going to have a great match on Sunday. And uh, ended up with him getting the uh, high fly flow uh, win over uh, Lance Archer. And then afterwards, so uh, they had a long brawl. And uh, Dave was saying that like this was, the idea of this was like straight out of uh, I forget what he said mid south or something like that, but uh, I actually think they do another long brawl on Rampage, I think, and uh, I think that's the one that was supposed to be reminiscent of the old days. And this was long, but man, I laughed and laughed in a in a way where I felt bad for them. Poor Tanahashi and Moxley standing in the ring looking at each other for five straight minutes. That was wrestling history. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Yes, Fujita and Shiozaki. 30 yes. minute stare down. Mm-hmm. So Moxley and Tanahashi, I believe, would be in uh, second place for the longest <laughs> stare down in the history of wrestling. Those poor guys. And they kept cutting to them in the ring. And these poor guys just have to look at each other. And God. Holy the plans that looked the, the plan was good, you know, have a, a fire, a dumpster fire taking place at ringside, carnage everywhere, and then they cut to the shot, and those two, as you close in, are standing above the fray, ready to face off against each other. Just didn't end up turning out that way. Hopefully, they have more of a banger for however they close the show on Friday. But from AP reporter to AP reporter, Dennis Gorman just uh, let us know about this. Teresa Walker, who covers the Titans for the AP down in Tennessee, is also covering this Ric Flair final match press conference. And apparently yeah, what a says, press conference. We need a whole press conference. We don't even know what Ric Flair's match is. <laughs> Ric Flair says he's only worried about his pacemaker getting unplugged and an inner ear issue for his last match now set for July 31st. Says he won't take his blood thinner medication that day. There's yeah, he also said he player. also said about the pacemaker. You just plug it back in. That's <sighs> you just plug it back in. Sure. Well, you make the phone call. You put the phone up to the chest. It reads it or whatever. However, that works. You jump him like a car on his. I'm nipples. not making that up. By the way, I'm not making that up. They had an entire press conference about Ric Flair's last match, and they didn't even tell us what his last match is. They may not know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I call it Muda right now. Maybe Muda's on his way over. This is going to be one of his last ones. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. What the hell with it. Let's just let's just try again tomorrow, Brian. I think we need. Hey, to. I try again every day. I never quit, and I'm not going to quit after this show when I appear on Denise's program. So check that out, everybody. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners. I don't want to thank the internet, but we'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.